nationalism, violence, nude skiing, and elevator chicken? Is there anything those whacked out teenagers won't try? Find out next as teens run wild, only on USA's Real Wild Cinema. <laughs> I'm going to take you deep underground for the naughtiest of the classic B movies, all tastelessly edited so you see only the racy parts. Hey, aren't you up past your bedtime? Tonight on Real Wild Cinema, we have hot-blooded teens running wild in the streets, sticking it to stuck-up society pigs, the fuzz, and anybody else who gets in their way. I'm your host and a former juvenile delinquent, Sandra Bernhard. Our first feature, Malamundo, is an Italian documentary made in 1964. It takes us around the world to show that stupid, wanton, violent teenagers don't just come from America. Malamundo is visual proof young hormones and bad breeding will lead kids to try just about anything, even nude skiing. Is that an icicle or are you just glad to see me? <laughs> England is the land of the rockers and the mods. Unlike the rockers with their black leather jackets, the mods pride themselves on their sartorial splendor. This episode in Leicester shows what the possibilities are when a mod chick enters a rocker's hangout. They play a game here called Conquering Hero, which dates back to when knighthood was in flower. But the ground rules have changed somewhat. With this coin, the chick sets in motion a wild motorcycle race. After a complete circle of the city, the racer who returns first before the record stops wins the right to seek the prize. The favors of the fair lady for a weekend. This game is chicken. <laughs> These
these high school students in France have innovated a vertical twist to an old standard. The two combatants have to climb up on top of the elevator and stay there until it hits the skylight. <laughs> First to yell, brands himself chicken. There goes last week's winner. This contest separates the cool from the uncool. Some trade school students in northern Italy are lucky enough to find themselves located near a beach. The school authorities encourage the students to utilize their lunchtime in outdoor activities. They feel it is the one safe way to let off steam. <laughs> In the Swiss Alps, the teenage swingers are not interested in death. They are interested in snow. They are interested in skiing. They are interested in sunshine. They are interested in band-aids. Notice that hotsy totsy music playing when the two Italian sweaty Bettys were doing the twist? That was composed by Ennio Morricone, the king of spaghetti western. Just another useless fact you'll learn here, only here. Thank you, Sandra. You're welcome. Coming up, we'll see how rotten and rebellious American kids made themselves a nuisance. Are you talking to me? Yes, you. Why, you low down tramp. Oh, yeah and a chick fight from the 50s that will have you tearing your hair out. Don't go away because I don't take that from anyone. So you think gangs are a problem today? Wait until you see the nefarious girl gangs of the 50s. They made gang banging sound like fun. Gun Girls was released in 1953 when the authorities were just starting to quake in their boots about the dreaded teenage problem. Of course, all of the gang debs in this movie look like they're 40 years old. It should really be called menopause chicks. Watch out for hot flashes. Here's Gun Girls. Who is it? 
It's Teddy. Just a minute. Big deal. We have to wait for him. I didn't know you had company. Fancy meeting you here. What's with your job at the warehouse? Well, I wasn't feeling so good, so I thought I'd take the morning off. I suppose you're writing out the excuses? Oh, the man can do wonders. Oh, come on, girls. Let's knock it off. Well, I'm leaving. Bye-bye, everybody. Don't forget to give Joe's regards to your boss. You girls wanted to see me about something. We came to buy the guns you offered. I offered nothing. We only talked about guns. All right, quit complaining. We've got the money. Well, isn't this cute? What do you want? Just sit still, lover boy, or I'll blow your head right off your shoulders. Grab his watch and wallet, Dora. I'll never get away with this. I'll have you both in jail within the hour. I don't think so, lover boy. Because how would you be able to explain to your wife what you were doing in Lover's Lane with little Dora? I'll take the car keys, too, so he can walk back to town and cool off. You'll never get away with this. Look, Charlie, just sit still if you know what's good for you. Mind if I change my clothes? No, go ahead. Leaving so soon? You don't think we're going to stay here, do you? By now, every cop in town knows who we are, and they're looking for us. Mm hmm Joe just told me that you kids held him up with a gun. I suppose you tried to get money from him, too. No, I don't want any of his money. I don't need it. I'm not afraid. If you stick around, they'll soon catch up with you. Then where will you be? She's not leaving town. Joe's going to marry her. Isn't that what you told us? That's between Joe and me. We didn't know it was that serious. Say, um, I don't suppose I could borrow your gun for an hour or so. What are you doing here? Waiting for Joe. Well, so am I. Well, wait down the hall. I came here first. Are you talking to me? Yes, you. Why, you low-down tramp. Harry, I've got a feeling the cops are already looking for us, Teddy. If they are, they're 5,000 miles in the wrong direction. What are you doing here? Waiting for you. Where's Trixie? Trixie? Is that a name? She ran out on you, Joe. A last-minute bulletin just received. Advices that the two girls who boldly burglarized the Central Chemical Company's warehouse last night and slugged the watchman have been identified. Their arrest is expected at any moment. Come on, let's get out of here. No wonder you're so anxious to get rid of me, now that you've picked up that new girl. Let's not be ridiculous. Things like her wash up on the beach every night. I get it now. I suppose I was washed up on the beach, too.
Where'd you get that gun? Look familiar? Yeah. I got it from Teddy just now. Take a good look at it, Joe. Take a good look at the gun. Without this gun, you'd be up to your same old lies. Well, it's too late, Joe. I'm going to kill you. Yeah, you'll never get away with it. Operator, I want the police. Do you think those cheeky chicks change their blouses often enough? I can just hear them. I can't go on the lam and just any old thing. By the way, this was one of the first of many juvenile delinquent movies. These low-budget pot boilers went over so well with bored teenagers that Hollywood's major studios took notice and began making big-budget classics like The Wild One and Rebel Without a Cause. Then James Dean died and Marlon Brando got fat and, well, anyway, we'll be right back. They're shooting back! What'd you expect him to do, throw powder puffs? Next up, Ed Wood Jr. takes a crack at high school tramps teaching them a lesson in reading, writing, and semi-automatic weapons. Our next feature was made by the legendary Ed Wood Jr., who by this stage in his career was an advanced alcoholic doing films with bigger budgets than he was used to. It shows in the violent years. Produced in 1956, and listen closely, single guys, the movie's about a gang of girls who rob gas stations, rape men, and trash the local high school. Before you go and dump your steady and try and tame these teenage tigresses, you better hold on to your shorts, because if you figure the film was made 41 years ago, that would put these sex sirens well into their 60s today. Slip in your dentures and enjoy the violent years. <laughs> This is a story of violence, a violence born of the uncontrolled passions of adolescent youth and nurtured by this generation of parents. Those who in their own smug little world of selfish interests and confused ideas of parental supervision refuse to believe today's glaring headlines. But it has happened. Only the people and places have been given other names. Calling off the gas station, Joe. Oh, we can't call off Clanton's. We already have. But why? We could have had more of a ball at Clanton's than all the rest put together. Maybe it'd be a little too much excitement, even for us. The cops have pulled a sneak. They'll be waiting for us. So what? How can the cops know we picked Clanton's? I'll explain later. The main thing is they know. It puts them into our gas station jobs for a while. We'll have to think up something else. I'd like to think up something to get back at Principal Bates. She have you on the carpet again? Yeah. The old witch. What'd you do this time? Practically nothing. Nothing for them to get so hep up about. Just that math. Teacher flunked me again, so I told her off. I'd like to get even with all of them. What do you think about school? What are you driving at? I've got a connection that doesn't like schools. Most kids don't. We're not talking kid talk. It's worth a lot of money to a certain organization if certain damages are reported. I don't get it. You don't have to. All you have to know is, if you can wreck a few schoolrooms, you can make yourself and your pack a load of dough. Why would anyone pay just to have schools wrecked? That's none of your business or mine. And uh, don't worry if a few flags get destroyed in the process. Let's just say it's part of a well-organized foreign plan. It's easy.
something I've been waiting for for a long, long time. We'll get it done as quickly as possible. We'll get in, get the job done, and get out. I'm going to smash everything in this joint. Let's do it quick and get out of here. I hate you. I wish this was your scrawny neck. Get him into action. They're shooting back. What'd you expect him to do? Throw powder puffs? Look at him jump, just like rabbits. supposed to be this way. If you're still using your knife to rob penny ante coin toss tournaments, stick around for these self-improvement tips. Searchlights on delinquency, a blueprint for action. A knife can be a plaything in the hands of one boy. Or, a knife can be a convincer in the hands of another. We'll examine this world of the delinquents, their way of life, now, as we put the searchlights on juvenile delinquency. We'll be right back with a couple of crazy Zappa kids with a pedigree for rebellion, next. You'll be shot by thrill-crazy punks terrorizing a hapless community, including this young tough who ruthlessly attacks a cafeteria worker before paying his tab. Next on Real Wild Cinema. In the 60s, when mainstream America's fear of youth was burning out of control, along came Frank Zappa to stir up the pot. And then came his kids. And now a couple of them are here with me. Welcome, Dweezil and Amit Zappa. Thank you for being here. And we're so excited. Oh, yeah. So excited. I know you are. <laughs> right? You're I mean, shining right? beacons of hope right? in, in, into the future, into the millennium. Do you, do yeah. you mind? Can, can I? Can Please I? take the oh, fruit good, and good. eat it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Hey, is the teenage behavior in these movies tonight shocking or what? You know, I, I watched it and I was so offended. I. I I had to try to figure out who I could call to complain to because... Did you I mean, find anybody? The stuff in this is so crazy. <laughs> is that good? Yeah, you want some? Yeah. Listen, banana boy. Listen, mm -hmm. the first thing I think we're seeing... You want some? <laughs> no, babe, it's okay. Oh, these girls are going crazy. <laughs> They're destroying the school. Mm. Yeah. Well, you, you see, there's... Don't they choke. Have, I don't want to have to do the Heimlich. Check Help it yourself. out. Help check it out. They, they, have, they have a meeting with this crazy lady in this, mm. in this mm. one thing with these really bad girls. <laughs> and uh, she tells them to uh, destroy the school. Yeah. But uh, also, if they feel like it, to burn some flags. Oh, you know, let's man. Let's say it's a foreign plot. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's so uh, strange. You know what I love the most? The girls the girls uh, are shooting the guns, uh -huh. and their cops are firing back, and they're surprised that the cops are firing back. And then the girl uh, says, look at him. He's jumping just like a jackrabbit. <laughs> that, that part was brilliant, especially when she gets shot. And goes, it wasn't supposed to be this way. And dies. And she dies. Mm -hmm. That's so hot. 
And then somebody it's, came and like tried to have sex with her, but that but was the a whole other thing. It's so thing. true, don't you isn't think? it? Right. I mean, yeah. So tr it's those those movies hold up today because it's what the youth of America is really like now. Totally. So totally I mean, mild in comparison. It's like a history lesson. Mild you know, you in the streets. These, Hey, I good. heard your pet peeve are like y older actors playing kids. Is that yes, true? Yes, well, I'm fascinated by it, and they, they've done a fine job of portraying, you know, older actors as teenagers in these clips. Uh, but, for example, someone like Ralph Macchio is still playing 15. Is that bizarre yeah, or what? Yeah, he's like what 40. About? What are you talking about? He's still the karate he's kid. No. Nope. He is. He's caught in a <laughs> horrible time warp. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's not older than that, is he? No, but get out of here. He's not older than that. Older than 16? Yeah. yeah. Yes, he yeah, is. Yeah, I'm afraid, I'm afraid to break He's the news. He's married. Omit. He has four kids. What? Yes. You can't get married unless you're over 18. Right? He is over 18. <laughs> what are you talking about? He's I love that Zappa shtick. Don't you love You're it? You're blowing my mind. <laughs> oh, right, right. Hey, why, why, why haven't this we seen you guys right in now. any teenage movies? What is happening, People man? People are afraid of us. But the teenagers dig you. The teenage girls scream and like, oh, you know, yeah. have hysterics. You know how it is. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable. So you're a big fan of like 50s and 60s movies, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, well. Teenage uh, movies specifically. Well, the, the good ones and the bad ones. But I mean, the clips Aren't they that, one and the same? Um, in some cases, yes. But the ones that are really bad, uh, so bad that they're good, are, are more fantastic than the ones that are just sort of almost Do good. you have a personal favorite, the worst movie? I mean, sorry, the best movie you've ever seen? The best worst movie? Yeah. Yeah, the Colossal Man, probably. Yeah. Actually, you look like him today. You can actually play him. You, you, have you, to gouge out, you have to gouge out one of your eyes and put a, like, wrap a big <laughs> diaper around you. You're being so mean to me. I, I love you. You need a little butt slapping. Really? You need a little hey, spanky, let spanky. Me, let me I'm on places with you, you know. Yeah, what do you mean? You're, you get a little closer to her. and <clears throat> I'm going to spank your head and then I'm going to kiss your butt. Oh, All right, yeah. look, you guys, right. stay here, because I, I want to go to a clip, and, and right. we're going to look at some stuff and then come back. You got it. And this 1969 short, just for the hell of it, mean-spirited is the order of the day. My kind of movie. Generation, and we're telling this to you. The coming generation will come in from the zoo.
Welcome back, you rocking teenagers. I'm here with the Zappas. How about that zany rock music from that clip? The music in those movies is better than anything on the radio today. I wonder if we can get them anywhere. I wonder if they're available. I, I want to just tape them right off the TV. That would be they actually, sound the best. That would be the best. In yeah. like an old like hi-fi television, not yeah. a stereo. I hate stereo. I resent <laughs> stereo. You do? Yeah. <laughs> James Dean idolizes an angst-ridden youth. Do you guys have a favorite angst-ridden youth in movies, in, in our movies. culture? Well, I think probably seeing almost fire was the that most <laughs> angst-ridden youth I've ever seen. How, how much angst oozed off the screen from More this? angst than you I You know, when Billy plays the saxophone, I weep. It's so, right? I it's mean, so right? It's so sad. Yeah, I mean, he's really, and he's, Was that St. Elmo's Fire or Youngblood? Youngblood, what are you talking about? Youngblood, you know what's the better movie? It's Class. That's the best movie. Any movie with Andrew McCarthy is full of angst. He was major angst. I oh. mean, like, he was mumbling angst. There's something wrong with that guy's he mouth. He <laughs> mumbled, like, he, never, yeah. he never got anything out. Uh -huh. He was mumbles, he should have played mumbles. He's, he missed his chance. He missed his bitching. opportunity. How would you remake these teen flicks? Who would star in them? Who would you put? Gary in these? Coleman is tops on our list at if, any time. Because he is still a teen. Well, he can play one. Well, the thing you know, is that most still, people don't. Still got it. That most people Rough don't macho. know about him. Huh? Yeah. He practices dark magic, black magic. So when he's in there, he he like he he like at any given moment, someone will be like if he was on the show right now, I might be transformed into a raging lunatic. And I wouldn't be able to control myself because Gary Coleman has that power over me. I love him. Well, he Gary sits Coleman there is beautiful every night and he, he reads the Necronomicon. I'm telling you, he reads from the Kabbalah and we're like, whoa, what are you doing, man? He's like, ah, 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 I'm back to see magic. Like that. And right it's on. scary. Uh -huh. You know, Sammy Davis Jr. was into black magic. I, I heard that he had every it. secret you know spell in the world held in his glass. He had eye. one black pinky fingernail. <laughs> I think he slammed his finger in the door. Well, they called in all their favors. That's why they're all gone, man. Like the Gonsville daddy. -o. No, but seriously, I love Gary Coleman. He's so awesome. But yeah, you could put him in any movie, and it's guaranteed blockbuster. I met Gary Coleman. Blockbuster. blockbuster. I met blockbuster. Gary Coleman. I go, oh my God, Gary Coleman, you're so awesome like that. And he was just like, <laughs> he was so <laughs> cool. It. He was so overwhelmed that he could not even. Communicate. It was so exciting. Then he tried to pick up my little sister, who's 17. Uh huh. Wow. He's got that magnetic Diva? macho. Diva, just run through here really quick. <laughs> I, nobody ever gets to see Diva. Just Diva's run outfit. really fast. Run. Run with your pants down. <laughs> uh, now go back that way. Bye. <laughs> Diva really knows how to avoid those bullets. I love it, uh -huh. man. Well, you guys, I'm so glad you came. I mean, you were here on my last set of yeah. shows, but I loved never really it. got to hang with you, Amit. And it's so it. beautiful. I love your mom, and I love Moon. The whole family is so sweet. That's All awesome. kidding aside, you guys are really, really <laughs> nice people. I don't know how it happened growing yeah. up in this stinking town. Bizarre. But you've managed to maintain your humanity, and I love you for it. We Thank love you, too. Okay? Kisses, love, masses of happiness oh, and yeah. joy and peace. Right back at you, baby. Real Wild Cinema's coming to get ya after this. We're back. Okay, point blank. Are you tempted to host a sinister jitterbug party? Think again. Forbidden Desires, our next film, first appeared in 1937, but it's based on the play Damaged Goods dating back to 1903. Famed novelist and rabble rouser Upton Sinclair wrote the script. So stop any more heavy petting, because one thing just leads to another until finally the result is the worst of all possible teenage crimes, showing your panties. Juvenile delinquency is the term used to describe violations of the model code by youthful offenders. Yet, if the exact truth were told, parental delinquency is at the root of the entire matter. Parental failure to supervise and regulate the conduct and affairs of their teen age children. Singly and in groups, they wander around the less desirable streets looking for excitement and thrills. Some go in for petting parties or trysts with boyfriends. Others who have automobiles or are allowed unrestricted use of the family car indulge in heavy necking in more or less secluded spots. 
Many of them finding their mothers busy with their social activities, bridge playing or in war work, amuse themselves by pulling wild jitterbug parties. <laughs> seeing my panties, I'm not wearing any. But that's not recommended for our next clip, Dance Craze. It warns of the dire consequences when Euro trash invade U.S. discos. A hint? Severe abuse of dry ice machines and groovy dance moves on your face. Watch. Oh, poor man. He is mixed up with all the dancers. Black Bottom, Fox, Peabody. Big Apple, Manhattan, Roomba, Samba, Mambo, Tango, Jitterbug. Oh, pull man, stop! Oh, look, the electric music box. Jukebox. Yes, how you say it? It's your dime cookie doll, so play the flipper side. Uh, yeah. That roll, sacre bleu. What a nightmare. next movie, Echo, it's bad enough that there's dangerous driving, high-speed headstands, and teens that wreck carnivals to the beat of Chubby Checker, but you'll find the true criminal in this film is the director for his use of the dreaded tilt-a-whirl camera technique. Sweden, a land virtually without problems, by Western standards, without political conflict or organized crime, enjoying the highest living standard known to man. You're in for a shock, but we promise we're coming back. I don't believe Laura's coming back. I'm going home. Oh, what's the big rush? Touch that dial, and you'll have to answer to me. You will join the real wild cinema fan club. You will be dazzled by a catalog of hundreds of uncut, uncensored, outrageous movies that we can't show on TV. Send $5 for a membership card, catalog, and newsletter, or order the Real Wild Cinema t-shirt for $15, plus $4.95 shipping and handling, and get your membership for free. Send check or money order to Real Wild Cinema, P.O. Box 65073, Seattle, Washington, 91155. You will join the Real Wild Cinema fan club. 
After tonight's teen spectacular, I'm getting back all those awkward feelings and inflamed post-pubescent desires. While my innocence is still intact, let's roll the trailers and check out the cute guys in the choppers. Would I get what? You mean the liquor or the slip? Both to the courtesy of Al Simpson. You know better than to accept presents like that from boys. Unless you're going to marry Al. I am. Just picking up a few things beforehand, that's all. Get a high school diploma, then you can earn things for yourself. With what I've got, I don't need a diploma. I don't believe Laura's coming back. I'm going home. Oh, what's the big rush? Put that gun away. Don't be a fool, Laura. I am, because I've been taking lessons from you. stealing hubcaps for kicks, and then they went after the big stuff, easy money. They thought they were tough until, but wait, you see this fuel-injected hot rod action picture yourself. They call them the choppers. Lock your cars and come and see national champion hot rods in the choppers. It's the most, it's wild, the choppers. Boy, are my juices flowing. After an hour of aimless rebellion and misplaced anger, I need you to be there for me next time on Real Wild Cinema. Good midnight to you.